We want to say good morning right now to Elizabeth Brown, who I believe goes by L. Uh, so I want to make sure I get that right. Come on a little closer to your microphone, and good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Mike. So you have quite the story to tell, and it involves uh, also some conditions that affect at least one of your children, correct? Yes, that is correct. And there's an event coming up in Shepherdstown. You'll be doing a walk to raise awareness for this. Uh, take us through this uh, and the details of specifically what we're talking about t this morning. Absolutely. So I will be talking about tuberous sclerosis, sclerosis complex. <laughs> it's a mouthful, or TSC. TSC. So TSC affects about one in 6,000 births and about uh, 40,000 to 80,000 individuals in the United States have it. TSC is basically an overgrowth condition. So <clears throat> it occurs when the um, TSC1 and TSC2 genes are mutated and these genes manage the growth of cells. And so when they are changed or altered, um, it makes growth uh, not be able to be adequ adequately controlled mm -hmm. and um, at least to abnormal development. Um, it causes tumors, uh, non-cancerous uh, non tumors, to grow in the brain, the heart, the kidneys, and the lungs. And um, it is a leading genetic cause of epilepsy and autism. So my son, his name is Beckett. He is 18 months old. He was um, having seizures when he was about five weeks old and we didn't know what was going on. My husband and I had no idea. We're first time parents. And so we took him to the emergency room, um, after he had, I think about a 15 minute seizure. And by the time we got to the emergency room, the, uh, ER doctor was like, oh, well, uh, the, the event stopped. So, uh, if this occurs again, just bring him back but his vitals looked good, so they just sent us home. And then after that day, we noticed that he continued to have these episodes or these events. And we would go to his pediatrician and constantly tell her, hey, the, our son is, ha like something is wrong with our son, he keeps having these events. And she said, okay, well, let's try to get him properly diagnosed. Unfortunately, he was not properly diagnosed for about six months. Um, he was misdiagnosed with silent reflux and Standifer syndrome, uh, which is a symptom of reflux. And it was a very hard time for us because us being, again, new first time parents and seeing your child go through something like this and not knowing what was going on. I mean, we did all the medications we followed everything that the doctors told us to, and he just was not getting better. So we advocated for him for a long time. Um, I was that annoying mom who constantly went on my chart and <laughs> updated the doctors on what was going on with my son. And they basically um, told us, okay, well, let's try to get him in to get him an EEG. Um, so with the EEG, they monitor your brain activity. They put little um, probes on, on your head and watch uh, your brain activity. So we actually went outside of West Virginia and went to Northern Virginia to get him assessed and come to find out he was actually having seizures this whole time. And that broke our hearts, of course. Uh, we knew something was wrong, but we just couldn't put our finger on it. So when it, it was confirmed, it felt like a whole world kind of fell apart. Sure. And the neurologist at Innova Fairfax said, hey, let's do a genetic test just to cover our basis, just to make sure um, we know where the cause of these seizures are coming from. My husband and I agreed, and they did a genetic test by just swabbing my son's cheek. And it came back with him having TSC. And the gene that was affected with, was the TSC2 gene. So um, the TSC1 or 2 gene can, can be affected. Had you so, ever heard of this before this diagnosis? Have you heard of this disease prior? Absolutely not. We had no idea this even existed. <laughs> and there's no genetic history of it in your families? Uh, no, no, there's no genetic history. And it was, history. was found simply by swab? It's something that, that they can look at simply from a genetic test? Yes, yes. Wow. So... Um, when we had that confirmed that he had TSC, that's when the appropriate treatments started happening. He started to uh, get on anti-epileptic drugs um, to help him. And um, it, the, the drugs that he was on were at moderate doses 
and they seemed to help in the beginning, but then his seizures uh, continued to get worse. And we were in contact with his neurologist and um, TSC specialists in the area, and we would constantly update them. And they're like, unfortunately, a lot of TSC kiddos have intractable epilepsy, which means that their uh, seizures can't be controlled adequately. So um, we started to go down a rabbit hole of what possible treatment options would be. Um, we tried different medications um, for a lot of kids. Uh, medications could work, or there's like a cocktail of them. A lot of them are on more than one. Um, so my son at one point was on eight different medications at near max. At the age uh, of one? At the age of one. Actually, but before one, he, about eight, uh, nine to ten months, he was on those medications. How were you able to administer the medications? Um, we normally just did them through syringes or we put them in his milk bottle so he wouldn't taste it. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So what are they telling you in terms of long term with this disease? So TSC is a lifelong condition and it currently has no cure. So Beckett will have this for the rest of his life until a cure is found. And are all of these uh, symptoms internal or is there anything external that you can see physically as, as a, in terms of how these things form? So the most common um, symptom, I guess, are skin changes or hypopigmentation. Mm -hmm. So there are uh, white uh, leaf ash kind of marks on the skin. Beckett has a few of those around his body, um, but those seem to be the uh, only prominent um, ones that you could see like on the body. Um, a lot of it occurs internally. Does this affect the uh, any uh, growth patterns of the child or anything else physically in terms of the development of your son? So every every child or every person who has TSC um, is very unique and different. Um, the way that TSC can affect them uh, can be anywhere from mild to se severe. So it honestly depends on on the person. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of uh, developmental d delays happen uh, beha behaviorally and also w when it comes to learning. Um, for example, my, my son, he is 18 months old and he can't walk yet. Um, so early intervention is highly encouraged. Is this disease painful? It could be painful, especially when the, um, the in individual has epilepsy. Um, and uh, sometimes there could be uh, mouth, uh, I guess like mouth pits, if, if you will, teeth pits in the mouth. Um, so that, that could be painful as well. Um, I can only really speak from my son's experience, um, even though he can't really talk at the moment, just like understanding uh, when, when he has a, a seizure and how it scares him when he does have one. And, and how often does he have a, an event? So he will have a seizure, um, anywhere from one to seven times per day. Oh. We actually just flew back from Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, Texas. That's where he gets his primary care. That's where his primary team is. And we did an overnight EEG and they caught seven, seven episodes. Overnight? So, uh, throughout the whole day, throughout the, the 20 day. hours, yeah. Now you have a walk to raise awareness coming up in Shepherdstown, May 11. Yes, that is correct. Give us some details on that. So uh, registration opens up at 9.30. This is a charity walk and it is officially sponsored by the TSC Alliance, which is a nonprofit organization who helps individuals like my son uh, live their best lives. Um, and they provide support and resources for TSC families. So this walk uh, will be a family-friendly event. We are looking at the weather and praying it doesn't rain, um, but it is a rain or shine event. We're gonna have food trucks there, um, face painters, balloon artists, and um, just a lot of vendors. And it's just gonna be a really great time for families in general and uh, to uh, an event to spread awareness about TSC and um, and the families Tell who have Tell us about TSC. Beckett's Beehive. I noticed that's on your, your shirt and your cup. What, what, what is the, is that your nonprofit or is that just your the way of support? That's our way of support. So Beckett's Beehive is my son's walk name, so or team name, I, I guess. So every um, individual who participates in the TSC walk, they're able to create their own team names. So um, a few moms and I decided to really brand it and, 
hype it up. So we got merchandise for it and everything too. Um, but it, it is um, to spread awareness with my son's story and also with TSC. Is it uh, the goal of the doctors to try to control the seizures with medicine as much as possible going forward? So again, each each individual is different. Um, for my son, he is highly um, drug, uh, drug resistant. Um, so they are leaning actually more towards a surgical option. Um, my son did have two back-to-back -back brain surgeries before he was one at Texas Children's Hospital. Mm. And um, he was seizure free for about, I would say four to five months. And it wasn't until recently that we saw that he was having seizures again, which is why we flew back out to Texas Children's. So it, again, it depends on, on, on the person's symptoms. If they're mild, um, seizures could be controlled with medications, um, but a lot of the times they cannot be controlled. And so sur uh, surgical treatment would be an option for them. Are there many other TSC families in this community? To be quite honest with you, I don't know. Um, I, uh, On one hand, I would say it would be great to meet other TSC families to let them know that they're not alone. And, uh, you know, this journey is just very complex. It's very challenging. And um, at the same time, it, it, it would be quite sad um, just because this this uh, disorder is is hard. It's a hard thing to walk through. So um, I'm hoping th that if there are families in the area that they would come out to the walk, we would love to meet them. Beckett would love to meet you. And um, we would be able to help uh, encourage and support one another. And you go to Houston for care. Is that common in this country? Do most TSC families uh, go to Houston for this uh, treatment? I believe a lot of them go to Houston. Um, there are things called TSC clinics where these clinics specialize in, in TSD and the effects of them. So I know a really big hospital is C Cincinnati um, Children's Hospital. There's CHOP, which I believe is the Ch Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Um, Texas Children. So there's there's a, a few of them that a lot of families recommend going to. Well, you're a, a marvelous spokesperson for this, and your poise through this is uh, simply amazing, uh, talking about what your own son is going through, which uh, all of us with children experience pain when our children are going through something. What you're going through is uh, just so much more than what an average parent would have to go through, and I'm amazed by your poise and your ability to discuss this. So salute to you, uh, and uh, hopefully a lot of support to you this Saturday, or Saturday the 11th, I'm sorry, uh, when the uh, walk takes place. How can you register for the walk, or if you can't make the walk, how do you make a donation to this cause? So um, you can go to give.tsd, that's Tango Sierra Charlie Alliance org forward slash Beckett's Beehive to make a donation, um, or if you would like to also join the team, there's a little join team button in white and a donation or a donate button in orange. Um, we appreciate any any amount. Uh, we would really love to find a, a cure uh, somehow. I know it's a genetic disorder, so it's going to be very difficult, but um, there is always hope there. And uh, this is a difficult question. I'm sorry to have to ask it, but does this affect life expectancy? Um, most of the time, it does not. Most individuals with TSC go on to live a normal life and a normal life expectancy and span. But there have been uh, stories that other parents have shared where, unfortunately, the child has passed away or a family member, loved one. Um, so, again, it's just such a, a unique um, disorder that it could definitely affect it, uh, everybody in different ways. But most individuals go on to live a normal lifespan. And is there any uh, research that shows if, if one sibling has this, another sibling might as well? Or is this a one-off that just kind of hits randomly? So about one-third of cases um, are genetically passed down, and two-thirds are spontaneous mutations. So if a parent uh, ends up having TSC, there is a 50% chance that the offspring will as well. Um, but again, most cases occur spontaneously. Uh, again, how do you register for the walk? You register for the walk. Um, you go to 
www.give.tscalliance.org forward slash Beckett's Beehive. Elle, great job. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Rob. Thank you, Mike. All the best to you. Thank you.